Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Well, I'm going to have to go ahead and watch a second episode of Better Call Saul for tonight. This is going to be episode 5, halfway through the season. And the reason being that, that final scene there in episode 4 where Kim goes over and speaks with Chuck and Howard and something about that destroyed tape and a duplicate and and she's going to try to suppress it from being played and they're insisting it's going to get played one way or the other it's going to get played and i figured she was going to be upset by that because she doesn't want that tape played because that's going to do jimmy in and then as she's leaving she says bingo when she has that sly smile on her face like hannibal on the a team i love it when a plan comes together so i want to know what that plan is and I want to know what Gus's plan is with Hector. So a couple of things I want to see here tonight before I wrap things up. So I'm going to have to go ahead and watch another episode. So like I say, that puts me at the halfway point of season three. Before I know it, season four will be starting. And then there's only a couple seasons left after that. I think there's only six seasons. I think the season that, that would be running right now, if it's still running, I don't know if it's ended or not is the final season. So I am rapidly closing in on the, the, the conclusion of this series, getting close to the, the middle point of this series anyway. So I'm, I'm really enjoying it, and I'm looking forward to how it's going to unfold the rest of the way going forward. Now, if you're interested in watching my full-length reactions for this or any of the other episodes or movies that I've watched, you can head over to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash 31mike. And I'll leave a link to that down below in the description of this video. Or if you'd like to support the channel here on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload new videos. And give this video a thumbs up. And while you're at it, leave some comments down below and let me know what you thought about this episode and what you've thought about the episodes before this leading up to this one. And doing those things, that will help me with YouTube's search algorithm. Now let's go ahead and jump into the episode and see what Kim's plan is. I was thinking maybe this was Chuck's house. I was thinking that might have been a unpowered... Well, it is Chuck's house. What's Jimmy doing there? Are we back in the past again here? Found a phone. Yeah, we, we're back in the past. It looks like it's from 1967, but I think it'll work. Just a sec, Jimmy. So, you got a phone. The yard's half mode. Uh, the sockets and stuff are looking A-OK. -okay. I'm going to check again just to make sure... We're almost there. Good. Are you sure this is the right play? I mean, in my experience, the bigger the lie, the harder it can be to dig out. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Oh, that's right. He he was married to um, Joan Cusack. No. One of the other Cusacks. I can't think of her name now. Yeah, she was only on that one episode, and then I kind of forgot about her. Yep, that's her. Rebecca. Chuck. You look lovely. Oh, it's so good to see you. <laughs> hey, what's with the candles? Why are you sitting here in the dark? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. To make a long story short, those hmm. bozos at PNM mixed up my payment. The deadbeat at 512 San Cristobal hasn't been paying his bills. And, of course, I'm... Two one five exactly. <laughs> they say they'll have it on again. Transposition of numbers. In the meantime, so did they get divorced? To the galloping gourmet. Mm, uh, yeah. <laughs> and he's trying to win her back now. God, or at this point, it's not now. We're obviously in the past. With Jimmy helping him, I might add. <laughs> she has her cell phone. I'm sorry. I, I, I hate that thing. I feel like I'm on a leash. Oh. 
Well, that's sending oh. him into an attack. Oh, it's my conductor. Um, I have to take this. I'm sorry. Uh, no. That's, that's oh. Yeah. Oh. He just snatched it. That, that ruined it for Chuck, didn't it? What is your problem? It is incredibly bad manners oh, to he's answer not gonna tell her. phone in company. I didn't know that you felt that way. I didn't mean to offend you, Chuck. Hmm. Yeah, that just destroyed everything, though. Everything he was trying to do, anyway. Late. See? Thank you She's for out of there. dinner. But I should be getting back to the hotel. Just give me a minute and we can... No. Uh, um, I'll just get a cab. I don't want to put you out anymore. Please, let me... No, really. A cab is the easiest. You will not tell her. All right. Hi, Andre. Yes, oh, I'm sorry about that. I dropped the phone. Well, I take it she's going to be in this episode because they wouldn't bring her up otherwise. Goldfish. <laughs> Was he, was he at the vet? He's bringing a goldfish doing, to the man? vet. There's barely any oxygen in that bag. You're suffocating her. Her? Oh, yeah, it's just this because vet. you don't see swinging dicks doesn't mean you can't tell a boy fish from a girl fish. I'm looking for someone with a light touch. I'm not talking some teenager taking a five finger discount of string cheese at the stop and shop. I need highly skilled, high end, discreet, a real pro. You gotta fit him in a tight space. I don't think so. I got just a guy then. Did we know that Saul, that Jimmy knew this vet? Okay, this is it. We can run without lights and mics. We'll collect well, all cell phones an and hold them for the duration of your testimony. Board. How were they able to make these accommodations? What's wrong with Howard? Howard's not happy about something. to it just throwing this out there maybe you don't need to testify at all i'm not going to risk jimmy getting what a year of suspension maybe two he deserves disbarment not some slap on the wrist yeah chuck's pretty petty he does he never liked him being a, a lawyer he's resented jimmy where did he go i forget the school he went to the virgin islands or grenada or something like that Mr. McGill broke into his brother's home and destroyed an audio cassette which contained a recording. But that was a duplicate cassette. Himself and his brother Charles so he didn't destroy evidence. He destroyed recording a was duplicate. Evidence in an ongoing legal case. Might they be able to use that against him? The state bar believes that once we have presented the facts, the committee will agree that disbarment is warranted for James McGill. Thank you very much. Bang, bang, bang. Then he kicked down the door. Well, Jimmy Howard. was very agitated. He was shouting. He well, Howard didn't Charles see him do that. He was in the other room. Objection. We haven't established the tape is evidence of anything. The defense has only acknowledged it as a piece of property. You testified you've known my client for some time. How did you come to know him? His brother asked to hire him in the mail room at our firm. And you did? Yes. What was your opinion of him then? I thought... He had a lot of get up and go. He was a hard worker. You had a nickname for him, didn't you? Hmm. What was it, Charlie, Charlie Hustle. Hustle? Yeah. Charlie Hustle. How'd you feel when you found out he'd become a lawyer? Surprised. Did you consider taking him on as an associate? We did. The partners decided it would be best to avoid the, the appearance of nepotism. Nepotism? Hmm. Your firm is Hamlin, Hamlin, and McGill, right? Yeah, isn't his father the other Hamlin? My father. <laughs> well, I guess that's not nepotism, is it? Which partner was the most concerned with nepotism? Charles McGill. Hmm. Did Jimmy know his brother was the one that prevented you from hiring him? No, he did not. Could you speak to the terms of Charles's leave of absence? You know I can't. But you can confirm it was due to mental illness, Objection. correct? Objection. Charles McGill. 
What's that all about? I love my brother. But Ted Kaczynski's brother loved him too. <laughs> Ted Kaczynski. He wanted He's going to compare Saul or Jimmy to Ted Kaczynski. I love him. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, it's yours. That was Huel. Yep, that's Huel. <laughs> now comes the plan. Put on the brakes. I'm sorry, my co counsel, and I need a moment to confer. There, there she is. I knew she was going to be in it further. Oh, is this where you claim the tape is spurious? That it's not really your voice? No, that's me on the tape. <laughs> but still, I have some questions. Like the recorder, it must have hurt like hell for you to touch that. There was a degree of discomfort, that's true. Would you like to set the scene for the disciplinary committee? Tell them, you know, what your house looked like at the time of the recording. Objection. Relevance. Well, the circumstances of the recording are materially relevant. How can you know what the tape really means unless you know what was going on when it was recorded? I covered most of the walls with foil scrim craft insulation. I also hung a number of space blankets. Compact mylar sheets. Mylar was on the lunar landers. That's the gold foil that was on it. It was like being inside of a disco ball. Do you know what <laughs> How did you know it would work? What do you mean? Hmm. How did you know your provocation would work? Why'd you think a bunch of shiny plastic would make me say anything? Isn't it because you knew that it was precisely the thing that would worry me so much that I'd say anything to talk you down? I'd say anything. Okay, yep. withdrawn. Usually it's a perfectly normal house. You think your house is normal? Can I call your attention to exhibit You've got nine? those pictures. There's a lantern on top of newspapers. You call this normal? I call them adaptations. Did the doctor who granted me guardianship for you think this was a physical condition? Objection. You can't introduce a TEG <laughs> as evidence. Besides which, the panel has already ruled that Mr. McGill's mental health is not at issue. No, the state bar opened the door to this on direct when the witness talked about his supposed play acting. In order to understand what I was thinking, you need to see Chuck through my eyes. You need to know if <laughs> I believe that tape was evidence. And I say it was evidence of only one thing. My brother hates me. Now, he claims that he lied to me to get me to tell the truth. And I'm telling you, I lied to my brother to make him feel better. That's what I said he was going to say. Depends on how we all understand the mind of Charles McGill. I said that was what he was going to say. I lied to him to make him feel better. Hmm. I'll tell you why my brother brought my ex-wife to this hearing. 4,000 miles she came. What Jimmy's driving at is the last time I saw her, I covered up my illness. I didn't want you to think less of me. Hmm. Now Jimmy has outed me in front of you. Earlier you talked about other diseases. Physical conditions, you said. Uh, so, okay, if you'd had, uh, I don't know, lung cancer... Would you have told Rebecca then? If that had been the case, maybe I might have. So how is this different? Mr. McGill, move it along. Hmm. I want to get down to brass next. This illness, what does it feel like? You mentioned it's painful. It sounds horrible. Does hmm. it hurt right now? There's always some discomfort, yes. But I very much appreciate the indulgence of the panel for their accommodation here today. I can oh, what was that fine. little nod? Right, so with the lights out, you don't feel them. If the current's not flowing, no. Oh, sorry about the exit signs. I guess they couldn't kill those. I mentioned the exit signs. They're not drawing much current, and they're far away. Intensity drops off with distance per the inverse square law. 
<laughs> okay, whoa. Inverse That's what the nod was. He went, she went and got you. Dumb that down a shade for me. The farther away it is, the stronger the source needs to be to have an effect. So if I had a small battery safe from a watch or something, and I got it close to you, close to your skin, you'd know. I would feel it, yes. Can you tell us where the nearest source is right now? <laughs> Jimmy, do you have something in your pocket? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact. From this distance, you should feel it, and you don't, do you? Mr. McGill, you were warned to leave your electronics outside. May I? Just as I thought. There's no battery in here. <laughs> you removed the battery. <laughs> That's a sorry little trick, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you got me, Chuck. Dead to rights. I removed the battery. God, Jimmy. Don't you know by now this is real? I feel this. It's a physical response to stimuli. It's not a quirk. Could you reach into your breast pocket and tell me what's there? Yo. What now? <laughs> yep, there's his battery. A battery. Mr. Chairman, Did please. you recognize that man in back? His name is Huel Babino. He's on our witness list. Babineau. You bumped into him Don't in the stairway. He'll name. testify he planted this fully charged battery on you over an hour and a half ago. Hour and 43 minutes. An hour and 43 <laughs> minutes. Thank you, Mr. Babino. I submit that Mr. McGill's mental illness is a non-issue. If he were schizophrenic, it wouldn't take away from the fact that... I am not it. crazy! <laughs> yeah, he called it a mental illness. Since he was nine, always the same. Couldn't keep his hands out of the cash drawer. And he gets to be a lawyer? What a sick joke. I should have stopped him when I had the chance. <laughs> Look at the way they're looking at him. Oh, and she's putting her head down. Yep. He just went on this, what, four minute rant? <laughs> <laughs> no. He lost his marbles. I got carried away. Well, he he did what he set out to do, but he didn't take any pleasure in it. <laughs> and there's the exit sign buzzing. Hmm. <laughs> Did we get any of, of Mike and Gus in that episode? Or was it, I think this episode was all about that, that hearing. But that was, that was interesting. That was good, the way. And we got Huel. Huel showed up. I spotted him there in that stairwell. So that was fun. That's another character I hadn't been thinking about showing up. But they're introducing all of the parts. They're introducing all of the characters from Breaking Bad. So now we know how they all kind of come together. Well, some of them anyway. I don't know who else there might be. But that was a really good plan to have him slip that battery into Chuck's pocket. And over an hour and 45 minutes later, or however long it was, sat in his breast pocket. Didn't affect him in the least. So it's got to be psychosomatic. It's got to be a psychological thing. And that's what the what the prosecutor or whoever that was got up stood up and said that that it wasn't about his mental illness, saying that he has a mental illness, not a physical illness. And of course, that's what set Chuck off. Now I'm curious to see just exactly what the outcome is going to be of this. If it wasn't so late, I'd go ahead and watch another episode, but it's getting a little too late tonight, so I'll have to watch a couple more episodes tomorrow. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and be sure to leave some comments down below. Let me know what you thought about this episode. Let me know what you thought about how Jimmy handled this. And if you're not already a subscriber, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and be sure to hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when I upload new videos. Thanks for watching. I will see you on episode number six.